In just the first half of this month, we've seen two important returns, but the way they return serves as evidence of the difference between the two partners NASA chose to send people up to the ISS. Unlike Boeing's Starliner, which came back quietly, Dragon in the Polaris mission has made a big splash with its safe return, carrying actual astronauts. Has NASA realized that they need to eliminate Starliner? All is going to get revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before we get into the meat of today's episode, we want to let you know, first, thank you so much for supporting our channel throughout these years. We are very close to the 100,000 subscriber marker. And to hit this goal, we need your help. So if you could, if you're watching this video right now, hit that subscribe button. It'll take a millisecond. And that way you are guaranteed to get updates whenever we release once, sometimes twice daily videos videos for you. All right, let's go ahead and continue. What do you think self-respect means for a crewed spacecraft? The self-respect of a crewed spacecraft is reflected in its ability to ensure the safety of the astronauts throughout the journey, starting from liftoff all the way to return. This is not only its basic responsibility, but also its very purpose, reflecting reliability and perfection in the technical design. A spacecraft only truly fulfills its mission and maintains its dignity when it can safely bring the crew back on the same vessel that they used to get to space, affirming that success is not just measured by attaining objectives in space, but also its ability to protect the lives of the astronauts on it. However, not every spacecraft out there can accomplish this. SpaceX, young and fresh, and Boeing, experienced and seasoned, are two unequally matched rivals. Yet they have seen unexpectedly contrasting results in their spacecraft missions. When their returns are compared side by side, Boeing's mission pales in comparison. While Starliner came back empty, Dragon returned spectacularly with four astronauts and a brilliantly accomplished mission. SpaceX's Polaris Dawn crew has returned home, ending their five-day mission in orbit, which included the world's first commercial spacewalk by splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico. Crew Dragon spacecraft carrying four astronauts landed off the coast of Florida at 3.37 a.m. Eastern Time, Sunday, September 15th. Polaris Dawn's mission made history by hitting a higher altitude than any human has flown in 50 years. An early Thursday morning spacewalk also marked the time such an effort was completed by a mission that was privately funded and operated. The goal of the short mission was also to test pressure suits designed by SpaceX in the environments of space, assessing their mobility and testing the wrist, elbow, and shoulder joint movements to help engineers design improved versions for future flights to the moon and ultimately the grand goal, Mars. Alongside a full list of biometrical research, the crew also tested laser communication technology connecting Crew Dragon with Starlink. But getting back to Earth is one of the most dangerous parts of any space mission. To return home safely, Crew Dragon performed a process known as a deorbit burn, which positioned itself to slice through the thickest part of the Earth's atmosphere. The spacecraft then hit some pretty extreme temps, up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, due to the pressure and friction caused by colliding with the atmosphere while still going at 17,000 miles an hour. However, the crew was supposed to remain at a comfortable temperature, protected by Crew Dragon's heat shield, located at the bottom of the 13-foot wide capsule. The drag from the atmosphere began slowing the vehicle down before Crew Dragon deployed parachutes to further slow the descent. After touching down on the ocean, the spacecraft bobbed in the water for a while till a recovery team standing by nearby pulled it out of the sea and onto a special boat called the Dragon's Nest. Final safety checks were conducted there before the crew exited the capsule and began their journey back to land. Having completed the mission in almost a perfect manner, SpaceX has stunned the world with its record-setting private mission. Newspapers, news channels, even major news organizations have sent their kudos to SpaceX and the Polaris Dawn crew. There were congrats from Bill Nelson, NASA's administrator, Chris Hadfield, a very famous and influential astronaut in the space community. Even the Chinese space agency tweeted congrats in the Polaris mission, showing that China is closely watching everything SpaceX is doing. Of course, kudos also came from key SpaceX figures, Elon, of course, Gwen Shotwell, Kinko Donchev, the vice president of launch at SpaceX, and a along with many other space enthusiasts just like you and I. It's undeniable how widespread the impact of the Polaris Dawn mission's been. In contrast to this joyful and lively atmosphere, we can't help but feel sorry for Starliner when it came back to Earth. 
No astronauts, no handshakes, no emotional hugs, and very few congratulations. But that's the price that Boeing Starliner has to pay. Unlike Dragon, which landed in the ocean, Starliner landed on dry ground. Besides using parachutes to slow its descent, Starliner landed on solid ground. Besides using parachutes to slow its descent, Starliner inflated a set of airbags just before landing at White Sands Space Harbor, a dry desert in New Mexico. After Starliner touched down around 6 p.m. September 6th, NASA did a presser the following day in Houston. Six chairs were set up at the table for officials. A week prior, NASA had sent out a press release announcing this post-landing press conference, noting that two senior Boeing officials, Mark Nappy and John Shannon, would be in attendance. However, about 10 minutes prior to the press conference starting, two of the chairs got removed. This meant that Shannon and Nappy did not show up for the presser. It was unclear at first why Boeing officials declined to participate. Shannon's particularly well regarded at the space agency, and longtime press members appreciate his candor. He was the last program manager for the space shuttle at NASA before taking the job of running crewed space programs over at Boeing, and he's not one to shy away from facing a critical media. Thus, we can see how even Boeing's own officials distanced themselves from Starliner's return. Starliner failed to achieve the most basic thing required to maintain the dignity of a crewed space flight in its first public launch. For Boeing, this is humiliation. The company, which once saw itself as professional and a reliable alternative to a fast-moving and daring SpaceX, now seems incapable of building a safe spacecraft. By now, NASA has to know which company to go with, but the truth is, giving up on Starliner is kind of impossible for NASA. They insist on keeping the commercial crew program, which is a bold gamble that subjected NASA to a lot of criticism. Can private companies really step up and provide a service that was previously only achievable by nations? NASA's two choices, Boeing and SpaceX, both missed the 2017 target for their first crewed flights. For a couple years, Congress was pretty slow to fund the program, and in the late 2010s, both companies faced technical challenges. SpaceX overcame serious issues with parachutes with a spacecraft explosion in 2019 to succeed in reaching orbit in the summer of 2020 with a Demo-2 mission, which sent NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken to and from the space station. Since then, SpaceX has completed seven operational missions to the station, sending astronauts from U.S., Europe, Japan, Russia, and the Middle East, and elsewhere into orbit. A crew from the 8th mission is currently on the station, and the 9th Crew Dragon mission is scheduled to launch later this month to bring Will Moore and Williams back to Earth. Crew Dragon has been nothing short of a resounding success for SpaceX, establishing a vital lifeline at a time amid deteriorating U.S.-Russian relations. NASA's reliance on Soyuz is unlikely to be sustainable. Starliners faced a more difficult road. In 2019, saw Starliner's inaugural uncrewed test flight, which was prematurely terminated due to critical software malfunctions. The gravity of these issues prompted NASA to categorize the mission as a high-visibility close call, mandating a second uncrewed test flight to address these concerns. While the follow-up mission in 2022 showed notable improvements, it wasn't without its own set of complications. Ongoing worries about flammable tape and parachute systems led to further delays, pushing back the first crewed flight to June of the following year. The most recent chapter in Starliner's saga unfolded this summer with its third flight. The mission brought the spacecraft's reliability into question once again as malfunctioning thrusters repeatedly forced the crew to abort their mission and come back to Earth. These events have been extensively covered in the media and scrutinized by the space community. The sequence of events highlights the complex nature of spacecraft development and the rigorous standards required for human spaceflight, also underscoring the importance of thorough testing and willingness to address such issues, even if it means delays and more costs. Starliner had to attempt an automated return and re-entry without a crew on board. But questions will and should remain even if it does come back safely. Starliner program will likely continue, if only because NASA is determined to have an alternative to Dragon. However, confidence in Boeing has been damaged, and its ability to restore faith in Starliner is seriously in doubt. NASA also needs to be questioned. Their efforts to promote commercial space flights have paid off, but only in the form of SpaceX. Other commercial projects, from lunar landers to future space stations, have so far produced mixed results. Whether the agency is truly capable of delivering on ambitious futures that they've planned, including the Artemis moon landings and a successor to the ISS, well, now seems like that's a good question to ask. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.